tonight and turn to the book of Proverbs. Turn to the book of Proverbs tonight. Keith, would you mind uh, getting me some water, please? Proverbs, and when you found your place there, if you would please uh, go ahead and stand for the reading of the Word, chapter, chapter 1, beginning with verse number 1. Proverbs chapter 1, beginning with verse 1. The Bible says, beginning with verse number 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. To know wisdom and instruction, to perceive the words of understanding, to receive the instruction of wisdom, justice and judgment and equity, to give subtlety to the simple, to the young man knowledge and discretion. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. Heavenly Father, we meet together tonight in your name. Lord, we thank you for being so good to us and allowing us to meet together. Lord, we ask you to just take over the services now. We ask, I ask you to just empty me of self and fill me with your Holy Spirit. I pray, dear Lord, that you'll be with us tonight. And Lord, just I, I pray that you'd be honored and glorified by everything that's said. Lord, I, I pray that uh, anyone listening to this message, that your word would be magnified to them. I pray that we would get a burden for it. I pray that we would see the need, Lord, in these uh, very troubling times. Lord, I ask these things in Jesus Christ's precious name. Amen. You may be seated. Hmm. The title of the message tonight is in the form of a question. Does wisdom matter to you? Does wisdom matter to you? And as we are going... Uh, our survey of the Bible, uh, really, we finished the chronological uh, portions of it. Proverbs would have fit at the beginning of 1 Kings, if you want a timeline, right at the beginning of 1 Kings. The first 11 chapters of 1 Kings cover the life of Solomon. And the majority of the book of Proverbs, probably uh, 27, 28 chapters of it, are written by Solomon. Uh, the wisdom of Solomon is renowned. There's only one man that's ever walked the earth that's been wiser than Solomon, and that's Jesus Christ. Because he's, he was God in the flesh. I mean, you don't get wiser than God. Okay, but Solomon was given an, just an extreme amount of wisdom. He was a lot of it was just gifted to him. It was just a gift. You can find that story also in the beginning of 1 Kings where uh, God came to Solomon in a, in a dream and said, uh, you know, what, what do you ask of me? And Solomon said, I need wisdom to rule your, your kingdom better, your people better. And see, that's the right attitude. That was the right thing to ask, wasn't it? Uh, Solomon was being very selfless at that time. He wasn't always a very selfless guy. All you have to do is read Ecclesiastes and you find he, could, he had just as much selfishness as the rest of us. But he, he was a, a very selfless guy at that point. He said, God, I want to rule your, your people well. I mean, think about the selflessness of that. He's realizing they don't belong to me. And Lord, I want, to, I want to rule them well. And so God gave him a bunch of wisdom. You'll also find that Solomon understood the need to study and find more wisdom. He, he, he wasn't, it wasn't all just given to him. He worked for a lot of it. He talks about digging for it like you would dig for hidden treasures. And you know how hard you have to dig to get gold? And how hard you have to dig to get rubies and things of that nature? And so Solomon understood the value of working for it as well. So it wasn't all just given to him. 
the verses we read, he gives why he's wrote this book. Why he wrote the book of Proverbs. If you're looking for the why, just read the first nine verses. It explains it pretty good. It says in verse 1, the Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. It tells you right there who's writing it. it tells you in verse 2, here's why. To know wisdom and instruction. To perceive the words of understanding. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, and judgment, and equity. To give subtlety to the simple. There's no, he's just going on, this is all one reason here. He's just giving you the reason. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. And then he makes this observation about wise people. A wise man will hear and will increase learning, and a man of understanding shall attain into wise counsels. And then he, he gives us another reason. To understand a proverb and the interpretation, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. It's not, now dark right there is not evil, it's just talking about they're hard to see. They're hard to understand. They're hard to perceive. Sometimes there's some... Have you ever just... Is there, has a deep truth of life ever just clicked for you? And you go, wow, that's deep. You know, and a light bulb goes off. And, it's, and something, something clicks, finally. You know, maybe you've, you've heard a phrase all your life. And then one day it just clicks. That's what that means. You can have your... You, he, he wants his cake and he wants to eat it too. I remember the day that clicked. I was like, oh, that makes sense. It's someone who wants to, you know, they, they want the impossible. They're wanting their cake intact, and they're wanting to eat it at the same time. It's not going to happen. You know, I remember the day that clicked. Like, that makes wonderful sense. It, there, are, there are deep truths of life that uh, they can be hard to understand. And, and so those would be dark sayings. That's why he's writing this book. He's trying to explain some things. He goes on in verse number 7. says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh, the reverence of God, the, the healthy fear of God, and, you know, all, all, I believe all of that would be encompassed in that, but that's where you begin. That's where you begin to understand things. Uh, listen, I, I, I really believe that genuine knowledge begins when a person realizes that they are lost. And headed for hell. And there's a certain fear that comes in right there. And they realize, wow, I'm, I'm going to face God's wrath if I don't do something about this. And then as, as they grow in the Lord and as they walk with the Lord, that fear becomes more of a humble reverence. And they start to revere God. And they start to have a real respect for God. And, that, and their knowledge grows and as that goes on and on. It says, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. But fools despise wisdom and instruction. Despise can mean they hate it. Despise can mean that they just take it lightly. It's not that big a deal. I can't tell you how many times my grandma would try to impart wisdom to me and I just ignored her. I, I just, it went in one ear and out the other. I can't tell you how many teachers have tried to impart wisdom to me. Just ignored them. What was I doing? Despising it. Taking it lightly. The Bible says you're being a fool when you're doing that. That's very foolish. He goes on and says in verse 8, My son, hear the instruction of thy father, and forsake not the law of thy mother, for they shall be an ornament of grace unto thy head, and chains about thy neck. And so we find the other truth in this book, he's writing to his son. He's writing to probably his teenage son. Maybe this was, maybe his son would have been in his 20s. I don't know. But he was trying to impart wisdom to a younger generation. That's why a lot of people uh, suggest all teenagers should read the book of Proverbs. Uh, who was it? Oh, Brother Robbie was asking me if I, if I could, uh, and, I, and, I, and this is not to make fun or pick on him or anything, but he, he was asking me when he was, when he was talking about getting married, he was asking me, is there any, any books you could suggest on, on marriage that, that you would say was really good and really instrumental? I was like, well, the Bible. Yeah. And, you know, he knows that. Okay, <laughs> he knows that. But I was like, really, I can't, I mean, I mean, there are some, but really, the book of Proverbs? 
Get into the book of Proverbs. Study everything it's got to say about marriage. Everything it's got to say about husbands and wives. I said, how about, you know, uh, study the marriages in Scripture. Study Moses' marriage and, and Abraham's marriage. Uh, look very closely at their marriages. Look at Ruth and Boaz. You know, on and on. I just gave you an example. I was like, you're going to have plenty of information right there. If you can glean as much as you possibly can from their relationships before you're in it. Yeah. But the book of Proverbs stands out. Uh, I was having a sit-down conversation with uh, Hayden and Terish, and they asked me, they said, hey, can you suggest anything on marriage? <laughs> Proverbs. <laughs> hey, can you suggest anything on being a parent? Proverbs. <laughs> I mean, it's, got, it's full of instruction. It's full of wisdom, is it not? And I'm not picking on them. I'm not. I'm really not. It's just, it's so, it's right here. There is so much right here. I mean, we've got our hands full with just Proverbs. And not just Proverbs, the whole Bible, but Proverbs is so rich. It's so full of wisdom. I gave them some examples of, of parenting advice. It says, chasten thy son while there is hope. I was explaining to them, there may come a day you don't get to correct your child. If it comes the day they grow up, you don't get to do that anymore. So it says correct them while you can. Solomon was wise enough to know that. Correct thy son while there is hope. And let not thy soul spare for his crying. That's the second part of that verse. You know what Solomon was, 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 was uh, uh, realizing? We as parents feel bad for our kids. And they will beg us to stop the, the punishment, the correction, whatever it is. Let not thy soul spare for his crying. In other words, it will hit a tender spot and we have, we have a soft spot. No. That, man, think about the wisdom of it. That flies in the face of all of the, uh, of, of the advice you'll find out in the world today. It just absolutely flies in, in the face of it. Let them be who they're going to be. Get them everything they could possibly want. No, no. That, you won't find that in the Bible. So you're either going to go with the Bible or you're going to go with somebody else. It says, a, a, a child left to himself shall bring his mother shame. That can mean a lot of things. That can mean lack of correction. That could also mean maybe uh, neglect. Not spending enough time with their children. Maybe not uh, being a part of their life. Maybe in that case, they start to think they don't matter to us. Does, does God neglect us? Or does He like to spend a lot of time with us? I mean, so, the, the wisdom of Solomon. You know, it just makes me ask this question, does wisdom matter to you? I'm finding the, in the majority of the world, people could care less. Just as a general rule. Just as a general rule. I have found, whenever I'm witnessing to somebody or talking to them about the Lord, I just kind of have this take it or leave it kind of mentality. I, I, it's, it, I wasn't always that way. It's just something that I've just kind of gotten there. I'm just, I'm like, you need the Lord. You need to get in church. I remember a guy, I'm not going to name his name, but I, I, he, I work with him. He's another driver. And he was telling me about his son, who is in a lot of trouble. His, his son's in trouble with the law right now. And I said, I said, okay, I'm sorry about that. I'll sure, I'll sure, I will pray for you. I will. That's all I said. I left it at that because uh, that seemed to be all he wanted to hear. <laughs> and uh, he kept on. I mean, kept on talking to me about it. And he's like, what should I? What can I do? What can I do? What can I do? I said, well. Do you really want to know? He said, yeah, I really want to know. So I started talking to him about probably, you know, they were in a broken home. You know, there was a divorce there. And so he wasn't always a part of his son's life. And he had already shared that information with me. I said, you probably neglected your son. I said, I don't know that, but you probably did. I said, uh, I would probably humbly go and apologize to him. I would definitely get on my knees and beg God for mercy in this area. 
ask him for some other, some more chances. You know, I just went through things that I would do if I were in your shoes based on the Bible. He wasn't really interested. It was just kind of like, oh, well, I was just hoping maybe you could talk to him. <laughs> well, I can, but he's not really going to listen to me. Because you're his dad. He didn't want to hear that. That's Bible truth. That's just where it's at. And, and I'm just finding that people don't really want wisdom. It hurts. Wisdom, wisdom can be tough. Wisdom can be difficult to attain. Let me ask you this. Does wisdom matter? Is it valuable? Is wisdom valuable? Proverbs chapter 3, verse 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. If you value silver, you ought to value wisdom. And the gain thereof, then find gold. If you value gold, I haven't met many women who don't. But then again, I'm not picking on the ladies. I haven't met too many men who don't. They say, I don't value gold. You just value what gold backs. I've never met people who don't value a dollar. At least somewhat. It says in verse 15, she is more precious, that's wisdom, is more precious than rubies. And all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. Length of days. I've never met anyone that doesn't value that. Long life. Hmm. Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand, riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. I like pleasantness, and I like peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. I'd say that's pretty valuable. That's pretty valuable. That's what Solomon said about wisdom. I don't think you can, I don't think you can overvalue that. That guy I was talking about with his he's having trouble with his son. I mean, just think about it. If he would just humble himself to God and say, God, I have been wrong. I didn't take my job as a father seriously. I didn't take my job as a husband seriously. And I know I can't undo that stuff. I can't redo that stuff. But Lord, I'm begging you for mercy. I'd like a chance to maybe build my relationship with myself. If he would just do something like that and beg God. And, and he was telling me, he's like, yeah, I need to go get my son. I need to get us in church. I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'd say so. Yes, sir. I told him when, when we have church. I haven't seen him yet. He's off tonight. I haven't seen him yet. Right after that, I saw him go down to the... I, was, I got finished loading up. I left. Drove past a gas station. He was coming out with a 30-pack of beer. Okay. I think that's probably what he was doing the whole time. Your son's in trouble. And you'd rather get drunk. You'd rather not listen to wisdom. The wisdom hurt too much, I guess. And I'm not paid. Just because someone's son or child is having trouble, I'm not saying it's always that problem. I just knew his background. I just knew that was his issue. And I knew what it would take to fix it. Didn't want wisdom. It, it wasn't very valuable to him. What is wisdom? When we're talking about it, it's got value. What is it? It's not just raw knowledge. Knowledge is, I mean, it's akin to knowledge, but you can know a lot of things. Uh, I can, you know, a person could know a really good way to rob a bank. They could know all the ins and outs of that bank. They could know the back door and the codes and all that stuff. Hey, wisdom says if you should rob it or not. Wisdom says no. <laughs> That's foolish. You can have a lot of raw knowledge. Wisdom is the application of that knowledge. It's the application of how that knowledge should fit. Wisdom is, is, the, is the thing that kind of overrides everything. It's, 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 it's the glue between knowledge. It's, 
It's deeper than knowledge. It's a lot deeper than just 2 plus 2. Wisdom, is. does that matter? Does 2 plus 2 matter? Does it matter if we say 2 plus 2? Or, or can 2 plus 1 equal 4? Wisdom's the thing that asks those kinds of questions. And then says, yes, it matters, because absolute truth matters. Anyways, I'm not trying to get off on that those deeper things, but I'm just saying wisdom is deep. Wisdom is so precious and so valuable. Wisdom, a lot of it comes with age. You'll notice as people get older, they get quieter, they get calmer, they've seen a lot more than kids, teenagers. You'll notice they've got a lot more on their mind, it seems like. They've got the wisdom to actually know that. Miss Louise just read a book on the agents of the apocalypse. I guarantee a teenager could read that book and probably go, oh, that's neat. Miss Louise reads that book and goes, I see it happening. I see it coming. That's called wisdom. Uh, I can rem you know, I, I remember hearing the stories when I was a boy in, in church, hearing about the Antichrist and hearing about uh, the judgments that were coming and how the world was changing, how America was changing, all those things. You know, I, I remember hearing all those things and thinking, huh, that's interesting. And now I look at it and, wow, they were spot on. That's God's wisdom. It's kind of guiding you. Helping you to see clearly. Wisdom helps you to see things clearly. It helps you read between the lines. Wisdom can help you see what's going on and is really going on with a person and not just what they're showing you. I believe really wise people during the tribulation will see what the Antichrist is really doing and they won't go along with it. They're reading between the lines. That's what they're doing. That's wisdom. I'd have to say it's pretty valuable. I'd have to say it matters. Let me ask you this. Who is wisdom? I talked about what is wisdom, but who is wisdom? Look at chapter 1, verse 20. Look at this. Wisdom crieth without. She uttereth her voice in the street. She crieth in the chief place of concourse in the openings of the gates. In the city she uttereth her words, saying, How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. You know, it's kind of like, it, really, I'm reminded of what Brother Mark said in his Sunday school lesson, how he used to think he'd get all these facts on creation, and he would get all these facts uh, in regards to, you know, uh, people proving the Bible right, and man, that'll show them, yeah, all people need to see are some facts. And then you tell them the facts, and they're like, oh, that's neat. And they go on with their little bitty lines, don't they? They go on with whatever they were doing before. It goes like in one ear and out the other. Whereas a Christian hears that, oh, you mean they found where they buried Joseph? And I think they did. Or at least a statue of him in Egypt. That's awesome! You know, a Christian hears about that. What's the difference? We're already a Christian. We've already stepped out on faith. We already believe it. It just reaffirms our faith is all it's done. And we like it. I think it's neat. But an unbeliever goes, oh, that's cool. Good deal. I was just reading a chapter on, on uh, Daniel's prophecy about Alexander the Great. And, uh, you know, I'm reading that and I'm going, wow, that's awesome. That is just amazing how, how thorough that prophecy was. You know what scoffers say? They say there's no way he wrote that before it, uh, Alexander existed, that he had to write that after. They reason it away. They don't want to believe it. It's not very wise, is it? It's a rejection of wisdom. Anyway, I'm getting caught, uh, carried away there, but it says in verse 22, How long, ye simple ones... Wisdom is asking the question here, will ye love simplicity? How long will you do that? 
And the scorners delight in their scorning, and fools hate knowledge. How long is that going to go on? Turn you at my reproof. You mean wisdom reproves us? Yes, it does. And wisdom says, turn you at my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit on you. What does that sound like? Who said that? I think Jesus said something exactly like that. I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. Because I have called and ye refused. I have stretched out my hand and no man regarded. But ye have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh. When your fear cometh as desolation and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. When distress and anguish cometh upon you, then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. Who do you think wisdom is? I think so too. I think Jesus is speaking to us right there. You could probably underline all those words as the word as the words of literally Jesus. I know Solomon's writing this. And I know Solomon's reason for writing this was to impart wisdom to his son. But God's reason for writing this is to impart wisdom to all of us. Yeah, wisdom's a person. It says in verse 29, For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, they would none of my counsel. They despised all my reproof. Therefore shall they eat the fruit of their own way and be filled with their own devices. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. But whoso hearkeneth unto me shall dwell safely and shall be quiet from fear of evil. I could take you over to 1 Corinthians where it says that Christ has become wisdom unto us. But pretty clear. Jesus is wisdom in the flesh. God's Word is wisdom. Jesus is the Word in flesh. When people, get this, when there's genuine wisdom, I mean think about this. Jesus is warning people, you're on your way to hell. Receive me as your personal Savior. Receive me. Turn to me. Get right with me. Call on me. That, that's the message of the Bible. And people go, nah, I'm not interested. Well, that's rather foolish. That's a rejection of wisdom. <coughs> that's a rejection of Jesus. It's the most foolish decision a person can make. Do you need... Marital help? Jesus has the answers. Jesus has all the answers. I would urge you, you know, if, if you're listening to this and you need marital help, study every passage on marriage. All you got to do is Google it. It'll give you 20, 20 passages right off the bat. Need help parenting your children? Get in your Bible. Jesus has the answer. All of them. Need financial help? Get this. Jesus has the answers. Need physical help? Jesus has the answers. Need mental, emotional help? Jesus has the answers. Are you confused about what's going on in the world? Jesus has the answers. And they are all wise. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are not the only words of Christ. It's the whole Bible, because He is God. Jesus has the answer. And, and, and the reason I'm emphasizing this is because I'm telling you, there's no book of answers like the book of Proverbs. It's got answers to just pretty much everything that you can think of. Any issue you're going to run into, it's going to have answers. I'd encourage people to get into the book of Proverbs. Does wisdom matter to you? That's my question. If it does, I'd encourage you to get into this book. Not just the book of Proverbs, but yes, especially the book of Proverbs. 
and get wisdom. How did he say it? Get wisdom with all that getting, get understanding. Get it with everything that you are. It's rather telling, isn't it, that the guy that Solomon was writing to pretty much ignored this. Pretty much ignored it. Remember the wise counsel of the older folks, of Solomon's counselors, that he was that they were trying to counsel Rehoboam, and he was like, nah, I like what the people my age have to say. That you know what that's the equivalent of? That would be like me going, I hear what the Bible has to say, but I like what people my age are saying. They say raise my kids this way. They say marriage should go this way. They say uh, that uh, I should think this way. They say, you know, church should be just whenever I feel like it, casual. You say, when do people say that? Look at the pews. They say it all the time. Pretty loud and clear. The message, I got it. I got the message. I don't know if that's what they were trying to tell me, but that's exactly what's coming across. I had someone one day tell me, they, they said, I love God. I said, okay. I said, well, you know, we were, we were arguing about something. I wasn't trying to argue. They were, I really try to avoid any arguments. But uh, they said, I love God. I said, okay. They said, you know what? You're just in your Bible too much. So what you just told me is that you say you love God, but it's the God that you want Him to be. Not the God that He explains He is. Sounds like a God of your own making. Sounds like you're inventing Him as you go. Does wisdom matter to you? I hope it does. I believe everyone here tonight, it matters to you. I don't know, but maybe someone's listening to this message, and I'm telling you right now, wisdom needs to matter to you. Jesus Christ needs to matter to you. His words need to matter to you. <clears throat> I grew up in church. I grew up with Bibles in my home. I grew up with people pointing me to the Bible. The first time I ever read Proverbs and really took it in, I was in my early 20s. And I mean, I soaked it up like a sponge. Why didn't I do that sooner? Oh yeah, because I didn't want to. It didn't matter to me. And it's that simple. I'm glad it matters to me now. There are some things that I, I, I there are some, some mistakes I made, roads I went down that honestly, I'm not going to get that back. Went down those roads made those mistakes, wisdom's laughing at me. Thank God. He's, he forgives the sinner. He forgives uh, the fool. And he can impart wisdom at really at any stage in their life. I would encourage you as, you, as, as early as you can, get in this book and soak up the wisdom. Let's, let's close in prayer and we'll go to our prayer lists. Heavenly Father, just come to you tonight, and Lord, if there's someone listening to this message tonight that's not saved, they've never received you as their personal Savior, I pray that they would do that. I pray that they would realize that they are a sinner on their way to hell, and they need to be forgiven of their sins. Lord, that's the wisest choice they could ever make. I pray that they would not be a fool in that area. Lord, for those of us who are saved, I pray that we wouldn't be fools with our lives. I pray that we would be wise. I pray that wisdom would matter to us. I pray that we would make wise choices when it comes to marriage, when it comes to children and family, when it comes to jobs and careers, when it comes to serving you, Lord. And, and I pray that we'd make the wisest choice and just stop wherever we're at and say, Lord, I'm yours. What do you want me to do? Lord, that would be the wisest choice we could make. Lord, I pray that wisdom would matter to us. Lord, I ask these things in Jesus Christ's precious name.